So 10 3, arcs and chords. Theorem 10 2 is our first one. And this is going to be something we use on almost every problem this time around. It's a really basic concept. I don't think it'll be too bad for you to remember. If two chords are congruent, then their corresponding arcs are congruent. Remember that word corresponding kind of just means the things that go together. So it's going to be the arcs that are formed by the two chords that we're looking at. And then once you get that written down, here's a circle for you to sketch. And on that circle, draw two chords, A, B, and C, D. Why are those chords? Yeah, both the endpoints are on the circle. And they're only chords, not diameters, because they don't go through the center. They're just chords. And both the endpoints are on. So what this theorem basically tells you, if you know that AB is congruent to CD, like the two segments, then arc AB has to be congruent to arc CD. And this one could easily go the other way. If you know that the arcs are congruent, then the chords would have to be congruent as well. I can. See these two chords right here? Yeah. The first thing I'm saying is that those two chords are equal. They have the same measure. So we're saying if those chords are equal, the arcs that they make also have to be equal. So because the segments are equal, the arcs that they form around the circle are also equal. Yeah. And then with the other part, I was just saying it could go the other way. If I knew that the arcs were the same, the chords would also be the same. So equal arcs, equal chords. I think that might make a little bit more sense after we look at this next example. So please copy that down. Got a vocab term from last time. The square is inscribed in the circle. You remember what that word means? That's part of it. It's inside of it. What else? It touches the outside of the Very good. Of the circle. Yes. Every vertice of that polygon is on the circle. So it's inside of it and all of its vertices are on. So that's what you can see in this square. We want to find x and what we're given, just to make it a little bit more clear, the 7x minus 2 would be this arc right here. And the 5x plus 6 is going to be this arc over here. So that's what we know. We're going to solve that for x. So any thoughts about how we can set this up? Uh, 7x minus 2 is equal to 5x. Six. That's right. Why? Okay, we're going to use what Lauren just said. It's a square, so by definition, all four sides are congruent. And what does that mean for the arcs now? They're congruent. So we're using the definition of a square plus our new idea. So since these two chords are equal, those two segments are equal. equal. So 7x minus 2 equals 5x plus 6. Really easy algebra, add, subtract, so 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. And by this point, I don't care if you skip out a lot of that algebra work as far as writing it down, because that should be pretty easy for you. But if you need to write it all out, that's fine. I'm not going to care if I don't see that one. Okay? Uh, why we said it would be equal to each other? Like how I solved it? No, I mean how you solved it, that's you okay with why I marked all of them as being equal? Yeah. They said it was a square. And this is just using that rule that was on the last slide. That was all the arcs. Yes, exactly right. All four of them around are equal to. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. So Next theorem. All the outside is equal to this. The, um, uh, is that what you get plug it in? Yeah. yeah. But in this case, we were just asked to find x. We didn't need to. And sometimes they might ask for an actual measure, so they point it out. This is one that I think is pretty cool just because it works. It's one of those things you've probably never thought about it before, but it is a rule that fits any circle. 
as long as it has this given condition. If a diameter or radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So it does have a kind of specific condition. As long as that's happening, it's going to bisect the chord and its arc. So go ahead and copy a circle. Looks like the one I'm drawing up here. On that circle, make GH. What kind of segment is GH? Y. Why is the diameter? Yeah, it goes all the way across from the end point to end point on the circle, and it goes to the center. So it's a chord that goes to the center. And then also draw segment AB. And then K, I'm just saying that's the center of the circle. And then to make it so that this circle fits this theorem, what else do I need to mark? What? Yeah, it needs to be a right angle so that way it's perpendicular. So to show that you got a right angle. So we've got our hypothesis out. I've got a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord. So what happens to the chord? It's getting bisected. So this part's equal to this part. And the arc also gets cut in half. So we're going to write that in words. We could say this. If GH is perpendicular to AB, remember that upside down, kind of like T, that's our perpendicular symbol, then, here's the way I wrote it like that, K is actually this point. AK is congruent to KB. Two parts get cut in half, or sorry, the whole thing gets cut in half, so the two halves are equal. This rule will let us figure out quite a few things that we previously wouldn't be able to. The given condition, they have to be perpendicular. As long as they are, it gets cut in half. How do you know what size would be on? Say again? Well, there's that little half on the side of the line marks, and then there's the other half is like one. How do you know if that was wrong? This part here? No, the other side, though. The big, the big part of it. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. What the theorem says is that the chord gets cut in. I actually don't know anything about GH. All I know is that AB, the green one, it's what's getting in cut in half. By the? By the red one. Okay, and that's actually a pretty good point to bring up. The theorem just says that it, the chord gets bisected. The red line, the diameter, or if it's a radius, that does not get bisected. So it doesn't tell you anything about that one. It only tells you something about the green. So we'll look at an example, and I think that probably helps some. If you're still not seeing it, I'll explain it again. Didn't you also say that like AG, arc AG is congruent to arc EG? Um, I don't see why that wouldn't work, looking at it. Yeah, that would be okay because G A H would be a semicircle. Right. So if you take this part of it away, or you're taking the same part away here, so that would be a valid. And we could prove that pretty easily just because it's a semicircle. Well, what if it like the chord isn't straight, so it's not a right angle? Then it doesn't work at all. Because the hypothesis says it's gotta be perpendicular. So if it's not, it does not fit this. Okay, example. You can copy everything that you see up here, including the diagram. I'm going to make my center D, the point where they intersect. I'm going to make that F. And we're given that we're going to find the F if AB equals 8 and GH equals 18.
And then to let us work this out, I am going to mark that this here is a right angle. So now those are perpendicular, so we can use the rules from that theorem that was out here. I'm going too fast. Well, you do have it written down. Just kind of think about what are some things that we know, and how can those things kind of help us figure out our answer. We want to find BF, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that with like an X. That's what I want to know, is that part there. So think about how can we set that up in a way that's going to allow us to find that second. We definitely do have enough information to do that. We just got to figure out how to use it. So tell me some things we know, other than just what's given. Okay, so what are they both equal? Okay, those both are four. I know that because AB is eight, it gets bisected, so each part is four. Yeah. Nope. They could be, but we have no way to know for sure if they are or not. So that's not any rule that we can use. Really all that we do know, that's a right angle. AF and FB are equal to each other. I know that. And that's what we just used. Would they be? Why? Because what, what kind of segments would they both be? If they go from the center to the another point. Yeah, it's a radius. So how long is AD? Nine. Yeah. How'd you know that? Because it's half the rest of the diameter. Yeah, GH we were told was 18. It's a diameter. DA would then have to be 9. So do you see what we could use now? Yeah, because look, we just made a right triangle. So how am I going to set that up? 9 squared plus 8 times 4 squared times 9 squared equals 4 squared. Plus X squared. Right. Now the 9 needed to go in the side by itself because it was the hypothesis. It's across from the right hand. So now I just solve it. So 81 equals 16 plus X squared. Subtract, what do you get? So 65 equals X squared. Now what? Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just going to leave it like that. If the problem is sitting you know, around your center, then I can do that, but I'd rather give an exact answer, and that's easier because I don't have any simplifying to do in that case. That's done. That's our answer. Okay, so we have them. The last theorem in this section. It was kind of like a converse of one of them that we just did. Okay, so I'm not gonna have you write it down. It's kind of like how the first one I said you could do it the other way. Same thing with our last one. Basically saying if the uh, parts are equal, they have to be perpendicular. Because that's the only thing that. And five, in the same circle or congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. equidistant mean? Same distance. Same distance. 